Awesome people! It's a good thing that you've joined us this month because we're finding out how we can hang in there when life gets tough. How we can hold on when we feel like we're slipping away. How can we live our lives with grit? Remember, grit, G-R-I-T, is refusing to give up when life gets hard. When you're climbing a rock wall, you can't just give up halfway and stay stuck there on the rock face like a gecko. You need to have grit and keep moving forward. Speaking of that, let's play a quick game to see if you can remember our rock climbing gear. Maverick. Ah, welcome Timbeka. Are you ready to do our rock climbing crossword? Yes, I am. Let's see if you have the grit to keep going even when it's tough. Okay. So, number one, a special footwear. Well, footwear means shoes, right? High heels. Not quite what I have in mind. We're talking about climbing. Yes. So, could it be rock climbing shoes? That's correct! Number two down. This item looks like a climbing belt. Like a climbing belt? Yes. Could it be a harness? Yes! And number three, a metal loop. Okay. Used to connect the components of rock climbing gear. Okay, let's think about this, girls and boys. A metal loop. I think I remember something sounding like the Caribbean. Is it a Pirates? carabiner? Yes! <laughs> it's a carabiner, <laughs> not the Pirates of the Caribbean. Yes, <laughs> that's correct. Number four okay. down. This looks like a very thick string. Hmm, is it a rope? Yes! Now, number five across. Okay. What item protects the head? I think I know what this is. Mm -hmm. It's a helmet. Well done, well done. Now the last question, a metal loop in the shape of a number that connects the ropes. I think I know this one. It's a figure of eight. Well done, everybody. That was grit. You kept going. And now it's time for our Bible story. Are you ready, everyone? God had rescued his people, the Israelites. He saved them from slavery in Egypt. They had a long wait though, 400 years. But they held on because God knew what they were going through. Then they started traveling through the wilderness. They might have not known which way to go, but it was okay because God was with them, guiding them with his presence in the form of a cloud by day and a pillar of fire at night. They could hold on even when things were scary or confusing because God was guiding them. It sounds like it was an epic journey. So what happened next? Well, after they had come through the Red Sea, they traveled just three days into the desert and they started to panic because there was no water. Well, that shouldn't be a problem for our God. If he could part the Red Sea, then I'm sure he could provide water for the Israelites. Well, exactly. But unfortunately, the Israelites didn't think like that yet. They had been slaves for a very long time and they didn't trust God yet. So instead of praying and asking God for help, they complained. What will we drink? The Israelites came across some water, but they couldn't drink it because it was bitter. So it wasn't safe to drink. Moses cried to God for help, and God showed Moses a tree. He told Moses to throw it into the water, and as Moses did, the water became good and safe to drink. God. 
God has he healed the water. Praise the Lord. That is awesome. It is. Then the Israelites kept on traveling through the desert. They had been in the desert for one and a half months long and things were going well until they encountered another problem. Oh no, what now? The Israelite community started grumbling and moaning about Moses and Aaron in the desert. The Israelites said to them, It would have been better if the Lord had killed us in Egypt. There we admit to it, we had all the food we wanted. But you, Moses and Aaron, brought us here in this desert. Now we're going to starve and die here. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am about to rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a day's portion every day. So Moses and Aaron said to the Israelites, This evening, you will know that the Lord is the one who brought you out of Egypt. Tomorrow morning, you will see the greatness of the Lord. He has heard you grumble against him. We are nothing. You are not grumbling against us, but against the Lord. Each evening, the Lord will give you meat to eat. And every morning he, he will give you all the bread you want. He will do this because he has heard you grumbling against him. You are not grumbling against Aaron and me. You are grumbling against the, 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 the Lord. That evening, birds called quail came and covered the camp. So the Israelites had meat to eat. Yummy! Also, when the dew had gone up, there was something on the desert floor that looked like a fine flake like bread, fine as frost on the ground. And when the people of Israel saw it, they said, What is it? I, I don't know. It is the, the, the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. The Israelites called the special bread from God manna, and they had this for the full 40 years that they were in the wilderness. God supernaturally fed them with food from heaven. Wow! God really took care of his people. Yes, he did. And you know what else? For the 40 years, God even made their clothes last. They were walking all that time, but their shoes never wore out and their clothes lasted. Wow, all this time my shoes haven't worn out. That's a miracle. Yes, me too. My clothes have lasted all these 40 years without holes or wearing out. Thank you, God. God provided for them in an amazing miracle to even take care of their clothes. He said this. I have led you 40 years in the wilderness. Your clothes have not worn out on you and your sandals have not worn off your feet. When we look at the story, we need to understand that God took care of his people. He sure did. God's people were going through a hard time, but God provided for them in amazing ways. You're right. When you look at all those situations, we can see how the people responded by complaining and how Moses responded by prayer. Both Moses and the people faced the same situation, the lack of water, the lack of food, the lack of meat, but Moses showed grit. Moses was also thirsty, hungry, and missing meat. He also needed clothes, but he didn't panic and complain like the others. Moses asked God for help, and he showed grit. And I think we can learn something from the story. True grit to do tough things comes from knowing that God is with us, and God will look after us, so we can Hold on, because God will look after you. Boys and girls, I don't know what you need right now, but the same God who looked after the Israelites in the desert is the same God who looks after us. So let's bring our needs to Him. And you can... Hold on, because God will look after you. Let's pray. 
Father God, thank you that you will never leave us alone. And just like you were with the Israelites in the desert, you will be with us. Father God, you know our needs before we even ask them. So we just bring the needs of the boys and girls watching and ask that you would take care of them and give them what they need. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Wow, Moses had true grit because he knew that God would take care of him. And we can too. Hold on, because, because God, God will, will look, look after, after you. you. That's right, Maverick. Jesus will never leave us alone. So that's why we can keep holding on. He will be with us. When we need something, we can take our needs to him like Moses did and ask for help. God met the Israelites' needs in a supernatural way. He made their clothes last for a really long time. He turned bitter water into sweet water. He made bread rain down from heaven. So God can do the same for us. That's why we can... Hold on! Because, because God, God will, will look, look after, after you. Talking about holding on, that reminds me of our memory verse. Let's say it together, everyone. In three, two, one. Let Let's us not, not become, become tired of doing good. good. At, At the, the right time, we will gather a crop if we don't give up. Galatians 6 verse 9. That's real grit to keep doing the right thing even when it's tough. Hold on guys, have grit this week. Now it's time to praise and worship God. Salani Gatle Bangani. Bye! It doesn't matter what's ahead of me Oh, I know you'll make a way and I'll see it Cause I know that you are real to me And my soul can testify Oh, I'll sing it, Jesus, in your name You make me victorious, whatever may come Shout your praise with all my soul Cause I know for sure that you're fighting for me You're fighting for me You're fighting for me, you're fighting for me. Oh, oh, oh One thing that I know That I know for sure You're fighting for me You're fighting for me One thing that I know That I know Sure, you're fighting for me. You're fighting for me. One thing that I know, that I know for sure. You're fighting for me. You're fighting for me. One thing that I know, that I know for sure. You're fighting for me. Oh, oh, oh. You're fighting for me. You're fighting for me. Oh